linebackers. Tommy Tupperville hopes this is going to be a banner season. Georgia Tech on the other side, a freshman. Reggie Ball makes the start at quarterback. They need balance, both running and receiving. For Chan Gailey, the hope is, in this his second season at Tech, they can put up some W's. Welcome. Our college football coverage continues here on ABC in Atlanta. The Auburn Tigers on the road to take on Georgia Tech, the Ramblin' Wreck, at home at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. This is a rivalry that goes back 111 years. Yet, it has been since 87 that these two teams have played, so they'll get it on again. And needless to say, there'll be a great deal of noise in the stands because Auburn has brought a huge crowd with them. David Norrie joins me here today for the renewal of this rivalry. For Auburn, a very disappointing loss to USC, 23-0 in the opener. It wasn't that they lost to USC. It's the way they lost to USC. A shutout at home, ranked number Number six. All the expectations in the offseason, and the quarterback, Jason Campbell, had a bad afternoon. His mistake on the third play of the game set the tempo for the rest of the day. Poor decision, interception, and a short field for the Trojans. And then when he did make plays down the passing field, he was let down by his wide receivers. By the end of the game in the fourth quarter, the Trojans were partying in the Tiger backfield. For Georgia Tech, also a loss, came against BYU. They did put some points on on the board and maybe more important they got a freshman quarterback going a true freshman reggie ball and he played super up at provo in his debut he was great passing the ball he made smart decisions he was very good with his feet and he's going to have to have a terrific game today for Georgia Tech to come out of this game with a win. He's going to be facing a much more talented front seven with the Auburn Tigers. And if he comes up big, I give Georgia Tech a chance to pull a big upset in this football game. Nothing more they would love because Auburn has won the last nine games. These teams have played against one another. 55,000 plus, a complete sellout on hand. When we come back, Auburn, Georgia Tech. The Tigers and the Yellow Jackets are rambling wreck if you prefer. Here in Atlanta, they are set to get it on. They've got a lot more people in here than they could have put in previously because they have rebuilt and expanded Bobby Dodd Stadium. Built in 1913, this is the 91st season. This stadium has been in use. Grant Field is the actual playing field in its name. Tommy Tuberville, fifth season. There are the numbers he has put up with Auburn. As we mentioned at the top, Gary, tremendous disappointment coming off the game last week, but Tommy Tuberville and the rest of the Auburn faithful have to put that game behind them. This team is fully capable of winning a number of games and maybe stringing, in, stringing together quite a few wins. If they run the table from this point on out, I think they would still have a shot at the national title game. So a big game for Auburn. You see the series record for these two teams going back to 1892. Dan Burnett will be doing the kicking for Tech as Georgia Tech won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so Auburn will be receiving Trey Smith. Carnell Williams will be back deep to receive as Auburn will be dressed in their white with the orange trim, the yellow tops for Georgia Tech, and we are underway. This kick is going to come down at about the three-yard line. Trey Smith has got it. Smith up to the 15, the 20, and that's where he'll be brought down. Smith on the return. He had 76 yards and four kickoff returns last week. Now let's meet the quarterback coming out. Jason Campbell. Taylorsville, Mississippi, Taylorsville High School, major for administration. Jason Campbell, tough first series a week ago, and I really thought that set the tone for the football game, but one thing you can credit Jason with in that football game, he hung in tough, stayed in, played the entire game, and started to get the pass game going. Darnell Williams, that's Cadillac, who goes up over the 25. James Butler came in, he led the team in tackles last week. There you see for Auburn what they have going up front in the backs and receivers. Now wide receiver Courtney Taylor is a budding superstar in the SEC. How much will they run? How much will they pass today? Both of these coaches have sort of said we will take what the other gives us. Campbell hands that one off right side. That's going to bring it up to about the 25-yard line. 
It is tough to run both ways for Auburn. You take a look at the offensive line. They did not play well last week. Yeah, we mentioned the tough game for Jason Campbell, the quarterback, Danny Lindsay. It was a real adventure for him. He was beat all afternoon long by a tough nose guard for USC. And then we look at the defensive line for Georgia Tech. Jarris Wilkinson, four tackles behind the line of scrimmage at Provo. A couple of them sacks. He's a converted linebacker. One of the problems the Georgia Tech line will have, they are outweighed average by 49 pounds by the Auburn line. That is a significant difference. About the 25-yard line. It is tough to run both ways for Auburn. You take a look at the offensive line. They did not play well last week. Yeah, we mentioned the tough game for Jason Campbell, the quarterback, Danny Lindsay. It was a real adventure for him. He was beat all afternoon long by a tough nose guard for USC. And then we look at the defensive line for Georgia Tech. Jarris Wilkinson, four tackles behind the line of scrimmage at Provo. A couple of them sacks. He's a converted linebacker. One of the problems the Georgia Tech line will have, they are outweighed average by 49 pounds by the Auburn line. That is a significant difference. Jake Slaughter in the backfield. Handoff straight ahead. Going to try and find some running rope over the 35 to about the 38-yard line. He just came in. Carries the football for the first time. Landry got him. Daryl Smith, middle linebacker for Georgia Tech. Prototype NFL player. He'll play on Sundays. And then Reb Reuben Houston is the featured cornerback. If Georgia Tech needs to shut down a wide receiver, they usually look to Reuben. Campbell got the two-man backfield again, and it's a running game to start this, looking for room near side. We're going to see Williams, Brown in the lineup a lot. Eric Henderson on to put the hit on. Barnell Cadillac Williams, the junior, outstanding runner, did not have a good week last week. Well, and you look at the rushing numbers from a week ago, that 43 yards is a little bit misleading because you talk Williams and Ronnie Brown, they had 68 yards on 20 carries, and I think Auburn abandoned their running game a little bit early because of the score and also the numbers that USC was putting up on the line of scrimmage. This is a third and two. They go for the first down straight ahead. Not a lot of running room, but Brandon Johnson may have gotten the first down. The big fullback carries. It's close. They're going to have to take a second look. Short by that much. Do you go? I don't think this early in the football game. Sellout crowd on your own 40-yard line. Punt the ball away. Auburn has a great defense. Sometimes you have to play to your defense. And even though Auburn's going to punt here, Gary, it's quite a better start than a week ago against the Trojans. Kobe Bliss is going to do the punting. There's a big stand for Tech defensively. Jonathan Smith is the lone man back to receive this punt. That punt's going to be a little short. It'll hit at the 30 and bounce back to about the 35 where it's touched up by Cooper Wallace. 25 yard punt there is a flag down behind the play this might be a hold against Auburn that's what it is a short punt question of whether or not you want it and they're saying no they're going to decline the penalty here and just take the position on the offense that penalty is declined kick is out first half Georgia Tech sprung a couple players free up the gut. Auburn forced to hold, and a good decision for Georgia Tech to go ahead and let that penalty go. Let's meet an 18-year-old quarterback. I'm Reggie Ball from Stevenson High School in Stone Mountain, Georgia. I'm studying engineering. And Reggie Ball had a terrific night, as we said at the top. And if there's one thing he's going to have to do differently in this football game against Auburn, I think he's going to have to stretch the field, get the ball down the field somewhere. That's what they're going to start out doing by passing and looking deep, going for an all, open at the 20, the 15, and all the way down to the 10. Nate Curry on the reception. Carlos Rogers, a touchdown saving tackle, a 54-yard gain. Five-step drop, post route by Curry. He's working against Auburn's best corner, Carlos Rogers, and this is a beautiful ball. I mean, you can't throw that ball any better. Threw it on time. That's an impressive deep ball from a true freshman. Last week, he was 15 for 24. Ball was in passing with one interception. But how about that for a start? And it is a 
First down and 10. The ball just shy of the 10-yard line. Fake the reverse. No room. That'll be taken down as Matthews had nowhere to go. Michael Matthews out of Cincinnati. Redshirt, uh, P.J. Daniels, rather, out of Houston. The carry. Georgia Tech back in receivers. P.J. Daniels, the tailback, was a walk-on at this time last year. Earned a scholarship, and he's become number one at that position. It'll be a loss of a yard on that last play. Obviously, you get off to a big start like that on that first play. Now you really want to put one home. But this is a tough defense. They're up against an often. They'll run the option. The pitch comes wide. Up to the five-yard line on the dive. P.J. Daniels again. The 5'10 sophomore. Indeed, he came in and put the hit on. The offensive line, they've got their work cut out for them. Yeah, it's nice with a true freshman quarterback. You get a second-year starter at center making the calls up front, taking some pressure off the quarterback. And then Reggie Torbor, he's a talent at the defensive end position for Auburn. Auburn goes four deep, two on each side at the defensive end position. All could be starters on this team. Gain of six on the carry. It's now third down and four. A big third down play. The Georgia Tech offense last week only one for six in third down conversions. They split both ways. Dropping back and looking into the end zone. Overthrown incomplete. Jonathan Smith, the intended receiver. Wow. So they are unable to convert it on the three to third down and will go for the three. Yeah, Smith was open on this play. And Carlos Rogers was beat again. Ball was just delivered hot. Reggie Ball wants that one back. It'll be Dan Burnett, the senior. Five-step drop, and he had him wide open in the back of the end zone. Burnett will try a 22-yard field goal. Hal Higgins is the holder. As Tech will try and get on the board. That one big play set it up. It's up, and it is good. So Burnett puts one through. And here in their home opener, Tech's got the early 3-0 lead. Ball with that long, complete pass. Taken by Nate Curry, sets up the field goal. And Burnett's now 3-for-3 three three in field goals. 54-yard pass that set that up. There are the numbers. Reggie Ball, that quarterback. Dan Bernat, who just kicked that field goal, will be kicking off here. Trey Smith, Carnell Williams, couple of speedsters, will be back for Auburn standing at the goal line. Tech on top, 3-0. And that's going to end up in the end zone. Williams decides to come out. He was deep. 15-20. And fortunate to get there, Kenny Scott moved in a cornerback and put the hit on. And a flag on the kick. So there's the call. They'll mark that back. Got back up to the 20. Dead ball. Personal foul against Auburn. Half of this is goal. First half. Ten yard line. That's costly. Uh, Chrysler passing playbook. David. On the big play last series, Reggie Ball. So much focus on how great a throw it was. Now we'll come back to that. Where they've started out. Williams is in the backfield, lone setback here. As they start from the 10-yard line, first and 10. Two receivers split to the right side, taken at the 15 and driven out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Not a lot of room over there for Silas Daniels, eight-yard gain. Let's go back to that Chrysler passing playbook. And great throw on the post, great route and catch by Curry, but look at the protection up front. That's a, I mean, this is a big-time front seven for Auburn. And the Georgia Tech offensive line picks everybody up, gives the true freshman a great comfort zone in the pocket, and he's free to deliver the ball downfield. Second and two. They set the two-man eye formation behind Campbell. Campbell will go to the second man through the eye. That's Williams. Williams gets driven back before he gets there. First down, that's Daryl Smith, the linebacker who moved in to put the hit on. 
Well, Gary, this sets up as a classic trap game, as they call it. Uh, coming off a tough loss against USC, Georgia Tech not nearly as highly rated as that Trojan outfit. But you come in here to Bobby Dodd Stadium with the new expansion, sellout crowd. Georgia Tech's hitting on all cylinders here early. Johnson and Williams are back in the eye. Auburn wants to run the football and dominate, have possession. It's not easy going early on. That's Williams again, the junior from Alabama. Again, it's the linebacker Smith in on the hit. Another couple of yards gained on it. A big change in the game plan, at least early in this football game for Auburn. They are being very stubborn about running the football. And, you know, we talked about it, Gary, last week. They abandoned the run fairly early. They faced a deficit, eight, nine men on the line of scrimmage. And Georgia Tech's going with eight-man fronts. Auburn's still running the football. Ronnie Brown has come in to play in back. Trey Smith is back there. It'll be a backfield by committee today. Man in motion near side, up over the 25-yard line. Bring Brown coming back uh, the other way. And uh, Smith found a little room as they go opposite the flow. And a holding call. Auburn running into some early problems here with the penalties deep in their own territory. Yeah, they haven't started with good field position as it is, but two big penalties, and it's had them backed up. During the run, holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty remains for pass. So the second penalty on this series, the first one coming on the kick, and that'll move them back again last week. For Auburn, they had they took only four penalties and 30 yards. They're almost up to that already here in the opening quarter. And Trey Smith, an early carry for Auburn, the hero from the Alabama rivalry game a year ago. It'll be a first and 17. Two men in the eye again. The skin, not a lot of running room. Brown with the carry, linebackers moving in. Smith came in with Fox to put the hit on. Our aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. With us, Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, continuing his 78-year tradition as the aerial ambassador and icon of the 104-year-old company. Great Georgia, to have him with us. Georgia Tech up front. Now, this is the way defenses are going to play Auburn. They're going to say, hey, we are not going to let you road grade us. We're not going to let you control the ball on the ground. Let's see Jason Campbell beat us first. Campbell's got the pass. Three receivers to the right side including a couple of wide outs that's gonna be caught at the 19 yard line Courtney Taylor the wide receiver from Carrollton Alabama red-shirted freshman made the catch and Courtney Taylor is out in great shape near the sideline if you give him a ball that's accurate on that last play he has a chance to make something of it after the catch but this is a poorly thrown ball and Jason Campbell is capable of better than that and he's got to give the ball out to the outside, out to his wide receivers with a handle on it. All four of these wide outs at Auburn lines up very talented after the catch. It's going to be a third and 12 for wide receivers as they work out of the shotgun. Campbell, near side, wide side of the field. They slot it with three. Reception made at the 25, not near a first down. No room to go with it. Silas Daniels out of Jackson, Florida, the junior. They're short of the first down, so again, Tech's able to hold. Conservative play design. Daniels cutting that route out short at linebacker level and not a great shot to pick up the line pick up the first down with that kind of depth good work by tech defensively jonathan smith was back cody bliss ready to do the punting gets that one off standing uh, inside the 30 got to give him room to make that catch and there is where tech will start first and 10 they've got the three nothing lead a good 44 yard punt BC, ordinary people, extraordinary job. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler, BU, nothing's better. Dr. Pepper and Verizon Wireless for you. With David Nori and our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Great to have you with us. Overcast day, 76 degrees, mostly cloudy and 55,000 plus on hand for the renewal of this great rivalry. They will start first and 10. Ball on the 27-yard line. Fake the pass. Pullback draw. Little running room. Nice work. Straight up the middle on that one. P.J. Daniels. He's the tailback. 
Seven-yard gain there. Take a look at the linebackers, the strength of Auburn. Now, Carlos Dansby, a bona fide All-American candidate, first team All-SEC a year ago. Carlos Rogers, actually very talented corner, but he got beat early in this football game on the post route by Curry. A second down and three. Reggie Ball dropping and looking for a little longer yardage. Can't be held on to Curry on the far side. That'll go incomplete. This is another great ball from the true freshman. And as a as an experienced wideout, might have been a face mask. Junior Rosary, number four, got a piece of the face mask, and the officials didn't pick it up, but still, Curry's got to make that catch. Ball was perfectly placed in the back pocket by Ball. One for three, pass department. Ball gets all the calls from the sidelines. A third down and three. Curry, they've got the wide receiver split near side. Looking, ball back, goes into the middle. That is deflected, incomplete. A hand got that one. Trying to go over the middle. That's going to be part of college football for Reggie Ball. They, they list him at 5'11", and I think he's more in the neighborhood of 5'10". And as a defensive lineman, if you can time up his release, you get a hand up. And you're going to get a few de deflections against that guy. Looked like might have been Torbor. Actually, it was McNeil who got the hand up. Mike O'Neill got it in there. Hell Higgins back on the punt. Trey Smith is back, having to back up to his own 19-yard line. Up to the 30. He had one more man to beat, but could not squeeze through. Gets taken down by Ananasi. A 47-yard punt and a 14-yard return. No surprise early, David, that uh, Auburn's trying to run the football. 11 offensive plays, only three passes, and numbers up on the line of scrimmage. Georgia Tech getting both safeties involved. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, all week talked about we are not going to let Auburn come out and roll over us on the ground. If they're going to beat us, Jason Campbell, the quarterback, is going to have to make plays. 27 yards rushing so far. Bonnie Brown has come back in the backfield. Wide receivers each way. Now move Mix back into that backfield. That's the handoff up over the 45 and up to midfield. They put Mix in motion and he came out to block in a 17-yard gain. Ronnie Brown, the, it was Landry and Butler that finally came up to put the hit on. 17 yards on it. Well, Ronnie Brown burst on the scene in Game 7 against Florida a year ago. Cadillac breaks his leg and Brown picked up where Cadillac left off. And went over a thousand yards and didn't start the four, first four games of the season. Good block by Mix who came back in motion that time. Again, wide receivers each way. That's Mix who goes back into that backfield again. They're running towards Mix's side. With this time, no room to go. Down goes Ronnie Brown. Landry got him and lots of other football going on, John. Here in the variety. Of course, this year with Jeff Smoker back, and if he's paying attention to his assignments on and off the field, he is a tough quarterback. He's going to be a great quarterback in the Big Ten this year. Second and 14, back went Campbell. Campbell ran up in it. They'll move into tech territory on the reception. Obamanu out of Selma, Alabama. He had four receptions, 53 yards against USC last week. That's his first reception of this game. College football triple header wraps up tonight. How about the Miami Hurricanes taking on Florida BCS spotlight game presented by ADT. BYU USC is another. Tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Check your local listings. And this is not Auburn's comfort zone as an offense. Third and long situations at the running game. Campbell's going to have to be efficient on first and second down. They send Brown way out to the near side. Screen play set up and can't convert. Trey Smith was the intended and simply overthrew him, and they had the Tech defense spread out pretty good for that play. You're absolutely right, Gary. They had maybe a touchdown set up, and, and this is another throw where Jason Campbell just, just needs to draw the middle linebacker Smith to him and drop the ball to number 23. Bliss Check that. Will.
22. Bliss will go back to do the punting. Couple of punts, averaging 29-5. Jonathan Smith is back at his own 10-yard line. Auburn has to kick again. Smith wants the fair catch. New rule, got to give him a lot of room. He's able to haul it in at the 17-yard line. 30-yard punt. And Tech will go first and 10 deep in their own territory. It was funny, less not funny, interesting, David, listening to both of these coaches talk about the fact that they give, they do offensively what the defense gave them. So there's going to be a lot of adjusting going on in this game. Well, so much is predicated in college football these days on how you want to play the run game. And, and Auburn, if, if they're able to play seven men on the line of scrimmage and control Georgia Tech's run game, they're going to have a lot of success over the course of the afternoon. Eight-man fronts, you got to make plays in the pass. Game. Now the linebackers back up. Up the middle, shot straight through center. D.J. Daniel, uh, Chris Woods, rather, getting in a sophomore, a tailback, who finds a little room. On Reggie Ball, Tommy Tuberville, what do you think? Reggie Ball is uh, a quarterback that we looked at uh, last year in recruiting, and uh, he came to some of our camps very athletic. 4-6-40, uh, 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 very quick, uh, can make things happen. Obviously, it's tough to play in major college football as a, as a freshman quarterback. I'm sure that Coach Gailey was very pleased with his first outing. He threw the ball with a lot of confidence. He scrambled around and made plays, and he gave them a chance. And he's doing it again here. Again, Woods. There he is, Ball. And he said he was one phone call away from being at Auburn. That if they'd have made the one last call, he would have gone to Auburn. Phone never rang. Never rang. So this is kind of a game for him where it's like, take a look. He would love to show Auburn why they should have taken him. He was so poised at Provo a week ago Thursday night. And, and how about the throw on the first series, the post run? Third and a long two coming up here. He wheels it to the near side. He can scramble incomplete. That would have been enough for a first down, but Fashe could not hang on to it. The senior working out of a tight end position. That ball was deflected by Jay Ratliff, the defensive end. Reggie Ball had what he wanted outside. Roll to his right. And that's a terrific individual effort by Ratliff to get a piece of that pass. So back to punt at his own 11-yard line, Hal Higgins. Trey Smith again is the lone man back for Auburn. This kick angled off to the near side and out of bounds. So good field position for Auburn. First and 10, and they'll be at about the 47-yard line. Only Elmore Leonard can point. <laughs> All right, we'll start first and ten. They come right off the sideline. The offensive unit does for Auburn. It goes right to a formation. Just trying to get it going in a hurry. Brandon Johnson, Williams are in the backfield. Receivers both ways. Again, straight Williams. Not finding a lot of room. It'll be close to midfield. Maybe only about a yard gain on that. Terrace Wilkinson out of Oakland, California, put the hit on. Jason Campbell coming off a really nice year for Auburn. They win a New Year's Day bowl game. He was terrific down the stretch. Wins against Alabama, Penn State. Played well enough to, to come out with a win against Georgia. The last week, some question marks and was not playing with the same efficiency he played with down the stretch. Again, they move Mix back into a three-set backfield that time before they hand off to Williams. Williams just fights his way up over midfield. Again, linebacker. Fox came in to put the hit on. That's a four-yard gain. Cadillac Williams. I mean, just, you know, go directly to the NFL. Do not stop and go. Do not pay $200. I mean, he is, he is destined for the NFL, and I think he is a first-round pick. It's just, a, it's just a matter of how high he goes. Already rushing better than they did as a team last week. Two receivers set to the right, third down and four. Man in motion again coming to the slot near side. Tech jumps, flag goes down. Reception at the 40 inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line on the catch made by Daniels again.
close to doing that. Dabo with a first down and 10. Two man backfield again. And Audible being called. Got to hustle him up a little bit right here. We move Brandon Johnson back into the eye. Pitches to the deep man with Johnson on the block. And I'm not going to get much on that. Let's check in again with uh, John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. State Capitol. 3-0. Tech's on top. And right now, Auburn trying to move the football. It is a second down and uh, nine. Back with it, Campbell. Campbell gets the big rush, gets hit, and is able to cover the football. Boy, that looked like it was going to come out of his hands and shoot away. He drew it back in. Eric Henderson put the hit on. As a quarterback, you have to be secure with the football in the pocket, and you have to feel the rush. Twice last week against USC, Campbell fumbled, and on one of them he was able to regain possession of the football. Almost gives it up again. You've got to have a clock going off when those defenders start arriving in the pocket, and you must be secure with the football. Lost six, third down, and 15 now. Jason Campbell, third down conversions last week, three out of 15, flags go down. up on the board and they've been key penalties now it's third down and 20 wide outs each slide they slot it near side only one running back Campbell back Campbell hands off on the draw not a lot of room there for Williams as Fox and Smith the linebackers who have got a big job today to move up front and make those tackles do so and this Auburn offense isn't equipped for those kinds of challenges I mean, they had second and eight, and all of a sudden they're looking at third and 20. The way this team plays, the way they rely on the run game, and then they complement it with play action and Campbell getting outside. Campbell is a very talented quarterback, but in this 2003 season, he has not yet gotten his drive. Bliss, trying to keep that one for Smith to have to handle. He does at the 15-yard line. So Auburn has had four... Second start, true freshman, only 18 years old. Hands off, and a herd of white moves in. P.J. Daniels, 5'10", 205-pounder out of Houston. A walk-on who got a scholarship last year. Able to find maybe a yard or a little bit less than that. A big challenge for Chan Gailey to come up with a game plan for a true freshman. You want to protect the young quarterback. And, and how do you protect the young quarterback? You run the ball effectively. You go with a short passing game, you play action pass, and, and you also throw on obvious rundowns. That's how you protect the young quarterback, and I think Gailey's done a great job of that at BYU and this afternoon. Jonathan Jackson has come in to play at fullback. The handoff taken to the 15, the 20, 25-30, first down. P.J. Daniels hit by Junior Rose Green, the junior. Just slip the tackle number 21. And what a move by P.J. Daniels to slip the tackle. Go ahead and run it. Watch number 21. We're going to freeze it right here in a second on Karibe. Go ahead and go ahead and freeze it right there. Karibe Didi. Watch this move. Nothing but air. That's a great run by P.J. Daniels. 16-yard gain. First and 10 on the 32-yard line. Tech. No room there for ball. He's taken back for a loss. Carlos Dansby, as good a linebacker as you're going to find. Let's check it again with John Saunders. John? Colorado against UCLA. This is a very impressive drive. Started at their own two, and Bobby Purify takes it in from a yard out. It's a 98-yard drive. Colorado on the board first over the Bruins. 7-0. First quarter about to come to an end. Meanwhile, the Irish struggling at home down to 19-0, although they have a deep in Washington State territory. Ouch. Wow. Loss of seven on the sack. Second down at 17. Receivers wide. Rolling. Ball looking deep. Another bomb he wants to throw. Oh, what a great catch at the 45-yard line. Darius Williams. Well, Reggie Ball had Jonathan Smith on a comeback out to the left side. He goes for the more difficult throw. 
drops the ball in, and you won't see a tight end make a better catch at the college level. I mean, this is a beautiful play by Williams. Like wow. Extending, huh? Wow. What a gorgeous catch and a great throw. This kid's 18 years old. Playing <laughs> quarterback here and just seems to be so poised. Takes his time, looks, finds somebody. Again, this time he'll roll right. He's looking deep again. Over the middle, that'll be incomplete as Nate Curry went up to get it. It was over his head. Carlos Rogers out of Augusta, Georgia was on him. Oh, you know, you, what I love about Reggie Ball is he's coming down to secondary receivers. He had a post route, came down to the crossing route. Now, he didn't throw the ball accurately, but he's impressed me. Let's take a look at our Aflac trivia question. Who was the first college coach to receive a paycheck? And the hint is he coached both of these teams. Paychecks have become pretty important for college coaches over the last few years. I guarantee it wasn't a million-dollar deal. <laughs> This or is in or a, mil a million five in Tommy Tuberville's case. That's exactly right. Xavier McGuire's moved in. Oops. Botched up in the backfield on the carry. Down at the 45. LeVon Thomas on the reverse. Fumble. And recovered by Auburn. DeMarco McNeil's got the football. The senior... And obviously a botched play. Well, and, and you're going to get some freshman errors. Watch LeVon Thomas. Now he's coming a little bit wide, and as a quarterback, you ought to save that handoff. Thomas eventually secured the football, but not 100%. And as a quarterback, if you don't have a good mesh in terms of the course of a wide receiver or a handoff to a running back, you've got to save the football and get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. That was on both Reggie Ball and LeVon Thomas. Well, let's see if this fires up Auburn as they get the turnover. Three last week. Now one today. Williams is in the backfield. Two wideouts near side. Not a lot of room there. A lot of pressure. Down goes Campbell. Eric Henderson again moving in. A freshman All-American out of New Orleans. 6'3", 265. The losses for Georgia Tech. Greg Gathers not being able to play with the kidney ailment. They lose a couple other starters on the defensive front, including Tony Hargrove, but Henderson has picked up the slack and might have gotten a piece of Jason Campbell's face mask on that play. Second down and 17, the two-man eye. Two receivers split near side. Long yardage situation. Fumble recovered by Tech. Never got that out from center. Jarris Wilkinson. got a little greedy. He could fall on the football here, but he tries to continue the play and pick it up, and Wilkinson just wanted the ball more than Jason Campbell did right there. Wilkinson plays on the other side opposite Henderson. They both had a great game a week ago Thursday night against BYU. And the turnovers and the mistakes continue to pile up for this Auburn offense. So they exchange the football in midfield is what happens on all of that. Now Tech goes back on offense. P.J. Jan Daniels in the backfield. Ball is going to carry it himself up to the 45, and he'll take it immediately out of bounds. A little shy of the first down. Got P.J. Daniels out there helping him with a block and an eight-yard carry. And Gary, you know what I like about Reggie Ball is I think he's going to end up being more of a passer than a runner. He's not a 4-4-4-5 four, 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 guy running the football. He's smart. He's decisive when he decides to tuck the football. But I love his throwing ability. I mean, he's made some throws in this football game where you would have never guessed he's three, four months out of the cafeteria line yeah. in high school. He had four, uh, five carries last week for 45 yards. Also had a couple of sacks that he was the victim of. They slot it to the near side. Goes straight up the middle looking for a little run and a big, hard hit put on. That's Spencer Johnson who moved in and got that shot. Want to remind you, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, John and Terry will be along. They'll have highlights from lots of great games going on. Analysis of what's happened and a preview of tonight's big game, Florida and Miami. All coming up. Both of these teams trying to establish it on the ground, and then Ball's looking sometimes on first down for those big first down bombs, and is connected on a couple. They've got Dixon and Daniels in the backfield, tight end. Fashia is a receiver. Watch for him. 
Wide receiver near side on this third and short yardage, and he goes to the air and thought there should have been a hold. Jonathan Smith thought he got held over here. That's not going to be a call. Carlos Rogers was there with him. So they do not convert on third and one. Now they're looking to the bench. And I think this is a situation where they may want to go ahead and go for it. I don't think that's what Chan Gailey's going to do. I think on this field position in front of your home crowd, I want to take a crack there. And it's just, you know, Gary, to, to be fair to it, it's part of that strategy of protecting the young quarterback. Now Higgins putting. Back of, no, they're going to carry it, go for the first down, and they're going to get it. A short snap, Chris Reese on the carry. It works. Well, Chan Gailey was going to go for it, just not conventionally. Direct snap to Reese, and they got it blocked. I mean, they blocked that like an off-tackle play, and Reese, a nice job of finding a crease. And picking up the first down. You don't see, you know, you don't associate Chan Gailey with specialty plays. Bennett Davis, a nice play on the block ahead of him. So a first down and 10. Looking ball, quick out to the far side. And that's going to be inside the 30-yard line. Jimmy Dixon. Dixon, a fullback out of Arlington, Texas, a receiver. But young Reggie Ball's counterpart, Jason Campbell, is a terrific player. Hit 62% of his passes a year ago. Very experienced. A New Year's Day win under his belt. But Reggie Ball is outplaying Jason Campbell in this football game. Reggie Ball getting the play set in. You see written on the wristband there that he flips open. He knows what he's got going. He'll go second down and two they want that first down bring the man in motion with a two-man set go to the strong side fumble again ball recovers it had it been blown dead and ball took a pretty good shot after he went down on that football and some georgia tech coaches holding their breaths breath on the sidelines and this might be the best play of the football game for reggie ball the handoff, physical inside running. Daniels doesn't get the ball secured. And watch ball fly in. Taking another look. That's Dontarius Thomas. One of the best middle linebackers in the college game. Shakes the ball loose. And what a play by ball on the recovery. This is a third down and one. Another big third down play. They split both ways. One back, ball looking, wants to go on the comeback, a great defensive effort. Junior Rose Green reaches in and knocks it away. Georgia Tech not showing me a lot of confidence, and Chan Gailey not showing a lot of confidence in the running game. Two straight third and short situations, and they choose to go to the air to pick it up. Beautiful. That's a heck, of a heck of a play on the outside by Junior Rose Green, who's a safety. We're going to take a time out here. Tech will. They want to talk about what they want to do. Like a rock. Welcome back, everybody, in Atlanta. Home of Tech. Auburn's here. Tech's got the 3-0 lead. A fourth down and less than a yard to go for the first down. Tech deep in Auburn territory. Ball will send the man in motion to the near side. Quarterback sneak for the first down, and it looks like he got it. The only question, David, is why didn't they do that on third down? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I'll tell you what. It shows. It, it, it might not have shown you know, total confidence in the running game. And the running game is, has been fairly successful early here against Auburn, but I think it's shown a lot of confidence by Chan Gailey in his young quarterback. I mean, they're not afraid to put the ball up, and, and those are tough throws to the outside, especially the way that the cornerbacks are playing. You mentioned Junior Rose Green breaking up that third down uh, in completion, and he's typically a safety. They got him playing out at cornerback right now. Tech hasn't done anything on third down conversions, but they're two for two on fourth down conversions. 
The first and ten, ball at the 27-yard line. Back again, ball. What is he dropped deep in a hurry? Into the end zone and just out of reach. Again, that's Nate Curry who was down there, and again, they wanted interference call, but Rose Grain was there. No call. Hey, they let a lot of contact go in the end zone on this play. This is a fade route. Curry. He's working against Junior Rose Green. Rose Green using the right hand there quite a bit. I and mean, to me, you can't grab two or three times and knock the wide receiver off his court. Course. No call on it. So it is a second down and ten. Still at the 27-yard line. Xavier McGuire has come in as a wide receiver. Again, the quick drop. Screen play set up near side. And it's going to be at the 25-yard line. There's a flag down, and in fact, I thought that came actually before that play got going. One official was waving his arms. Well, Auburn was blitzing Carlos Dansby to the wide side of the field. And it's roughing the passer. I think they're going to call the All-American candidate. Dansby out of Birmingham, Alabama. 6'5", 235. He's a good one. Uh, number 11's blitzing. You better account for him. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't a violent hit. I mean, that was a, one of those 50-50 calls, but you're at Bobby Dodd Stadium, big home crowd. They gave the benefit of the doubt to the true freshman quarterback. Flashed that elbow, didn't he, a little bit there? Yeah, he came up top a little bit, but I didn't think that was really that violent of a hit. It's a big penalty and a first and ten. Tech threatening here after Auburn had had time of possession in the first quarter. Tech here is getting it done in the second. Quarterback draw. There's room. The ten. The five. Inside the three. That's a great play call by Chan Gailey. And great timing and execution by Reggie Ball. Watch the block at the end of the play by P.J. Daniels. I mean, he just chops down Karibi Didi. Ball out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. The first true freshman to start quarterback in an opener for Tech. They are close. Dixon in the backfield. And he won for a first down and touchdown! He's already got a field goal. He'll go for the extra point. And a shocker underway here in Atlanta. That is up and it is good. And heavily favored Auburn coming into this game as we move towards the half. Finds themselves down 10 zip. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Pacific Life, offering insurance, annuities, and investments. Chevy Silverado, it's the right truck. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? Here in Atlanta, the wreck is rambling. Tech has got a 10-0 lead with 6.37 to go in the half. And Auburn hasn't scored this year, Dave. Now we're close to 85 minutes into the season. And, and remember, Auburn has been shut out in the last two football games they've played prior to this afternoon. Penn State in the bowl game, and of course last week against USC. Tech's got to be feeling good. They're not on the kick. Two back right at the one-yard line. Williams, 10-15-20. Still on his feet. The 30 and over. Tremendous effort. And a flag goes down after the play. Nick Moore, the tackle. This has got personal foul marked all over. Yeah, the play's been spirited after the whistle last couple of series. Face mask. A field goal and a TD on the board. Vortech. Turn the run. Inadvertent face mask. 
on the kicking team, five yard penalty, first down. Gary going back to the touchdown. Watch the flare on the handoff. Looks like Reggie Ball serving a dinner tray there. You'd like your quarterback to be a little bit tighter with the ball in near his belly, but the handoff and great blocking up front on the Daniels touchdown. Carried over the 40-yard line by Ronnie Brown, the junior. He had eight carries last week for just 28 yards as Auburn continues to try and get this ground game going. This is their bread and butter offensively. Well, the, the ground game is always going to be there for Auburn, but Georgia Tech is a tough defense in their own right. Talented players, a little undersized along the defensive front, a great crew of linebackers they're playing eight men and I think Auburn's gonna have to start throwing the ball some on first and second down Josh Campbell at quarterback receiver wide to the near side he looks here on the comeback catch made at about the 47 yard line by Courtney Taylor the red shirt freshman that's the first throw we've seen from Campbell that's been solid. Who was the first college coach to receive a paycheck? That's our Aflac trivia question. And the answer is Pretty none famous other guy. than John Heisman. Pretty famous guy. And he was a coach both at both of these schools, in Auburn for those years and then at Georgia Tech. And, of course, uh, Heisman is now noted each season in college football. Not for the $25, $2,200 checks he used to get, though. <laughs> How the game has changed. And Gary, Gary, if I'm going a little too long on a comment, don't be afraid to give me the Heisman. All <laughs> I'll right? give you the, yeah, yeah. You have to get the mic back. The big Heisman. <laughs> that a famous stiff arm. Yeah, that's right. Just short of a first down. Oh, Auburn, another third down play. Third and one. Auburn in that first quarter, that possession of almost 11 minutes, but couldn't put anything up on the board. Third and one at the 47-yard line. It'll be a straight quarterback stake by Jason Campbell for the first down. Quarterback throwing first big play of the game, Curry. They couldn't score the field, they couldn't score the touchdown, but Burnett could kick the field goal for a 3 0 lead. Then the fumbles happened regarding both clubs. They swapped it, and there's about 18 guys moving, and they'll all claim the other one was first. Look like taking over. He's a starter at guard a year ago, and I think they're still trying to iron out that situation with a new starter at center. It looks like it. We've seen one bad snap. First and 15 now. Campbell back. Campbell looking. Wide side. Just not held on to. Chance right there for Courtney Taylor. Taylor looked like he was wide open over there. Now he was wide open. And and I think Jason Campbell starting to settle down. Two consecutive throws that have been very impressive. And here we have an ISO outside. Go ahead and run it. Just a little hitch route on the outside. Ball is right on time. Perfect delivery. And, and it's and it's it's a lot like the SC game a week ago. Campbell came out shaky, and then when he started making plays, he was let down by his wide receivers outside. Second down and 15. Three receivers set to that far side. They go short on it, and uh, short of midfield. Fumble. Tex on it. Had the whistle blown. I think that's a live ball. No signal on it yet, but it looks like they are not ruling it a fumble. Because you saw him say, keep the clock going. Three wide receivers split to the left. Same route. Ball delivered to the outside. Courtney Taylor. Taylor took a couple big licks a week ago. That was a that was a live football. Well, it looked like it. James Butler put the hit on that ball, squirted up. But that's the call. It's not a fumble. It's a third down and nine. They work out of the shotgun. Looking back, Campbell. Campbell steps up. Gets it away for the first down. Up near the 30-yard line. Open in the middle. Silas Daniels and the fans here. The Tech fans unhappy about that fumble non-call. Daryl Smith the tackle. Oh, Auburn caught a big break. That should have been a turnover. And Jason Campbell capitalized. 
Daniels, a nice route, sitting in there between zone defenders. And what a job by Jason Campbell, staying alive in the pocket, keeping that right foot loaded, and delivered the ball well. 20-yard gain. Auburn starting to run it now. Up the middle, little room, Ronnie Brown. They'll get to about the 25. This is the deepest penetration that Auburn has had into the opponent's territory in the first two games of this season. They did not get inside the 33 in the loss to USC last week. Just short of 90 minutes of play for the offense. And we look back at a week ago, deepest penetration, 33-yard line. And Auburn still looking for points. 27-yard line, second down two. They send next the man in motion back into that backfield again. They go the second man in the eye. Second effort is going to get the first down and up near the 20-yard line, Ronnie Brown. Good effort by Brown. Fox came in with the hit. Now Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams both have first-round talent in the NFL. And how do you get enough snaps, enough carries for the two of these guys? And then you mix Trey Smith and Brandon Jacobs into the picture. And he is more of a power back when you're comparing, you know, Ronnie Brown and Cadillac. Rushing now for Auburn in the game. High formation, wide receivers to the left side. Campbell. Campbell will hand off second man again. Williams finds Rome inside the 15, almost to the 10-yard line. Ronnie Brown leading the charge. Tackled by Butler again, but those are the safeties who are moving up to put the hits on. And this big, experienced offensive line starting to create some openings. And what experience at the tailback position. Brown is such a great instinct runner, feels the holes, and hits it like a hammer. Auburn's got a second down and one for the first down. They've got time to move the football. No room there. Brown has become their runner of choice. Travis Parker out of California, the 6'5 defensive tackle to hit. When Auburn had their great run at the end of last season, Ronnie Brown was the tailback. It, Trey Smith, of course, came in, went over 100 yards against Alabama, but Brown really was the guy who spearheaded that late charge for this offense along with Jason Campbell, and I think right now Tommy Tuberville pretty comfortable to go with Ronnie Brown in this situation. Lost two, another big third down, third and three. The ball's on the 13-yard line. Campbell, they'll run it for the first down attempt, second effort. And then get it. They're shy of that 10-yard line. And again, Ronnie Brown out of Cartersville, Georgia, asked to try and pick it up. I think they go here. Nice tight ISO here. And look at Ronnie Brown. I mean, he did a great job of picking up positive yardage on that run. That should have been a two or three yard loss. Juan Landry's the man who came up and put the hit on. When we come back with 101 left to go in the hand. Here on ABC, and a good one. Auburn was rated by many in the top ten at the start of the season. They lost last week, shut out USC. They dropped to 17. So this game, as you were talking about there, this important game for them to get back into that mix. Well, this is a huge game because the Auburn program has all their goals still in front of them, including a possibility for Tommy Tuberville to get into a national title game. I mean, if you're going to lose a game and you have national, national title aspirations, lose it in your first game and lose it to a very good team. And I think USC is better than a very good team. But if, if Auburn's a good enough team to run the table on their schedule and a lot of big-time opponents in the SEC remaining, but if they run the table, I think they make the national title game. So all was not lost. They've got that drive, 13 plays, second down, goal to goal on the five. They work out of the shotgun, Campbell running, being chased, double team, throws it away. And he took a nasty spill into the tuba. Boy, he saw danger coming from behind and in front. Eric Henderson again on the charge with Fox there. Here in Fox, number 54, came free right up the middle. And he's one of the top linebackers on the East Coast, if not the country. And then Eric Henderson finishes things off. That's a, that's a rough, rough way to get to band camp. <laughs> 14th play of this drive. 
The Tech defense has been there so far. It's a third down and goal at the five-yard line. Jason Campbell, the quarterback. One receiver right, three left. And as they overload at far side, that's where they're looking into the end zone. Campbell can't find anybody, gets protection, gets hit, and has to throw it away again. Fox again putting the pressure on. Kieran Fox and Daryl Smith are one of the best tandems that you'll find in college football. They're two talents side by side. And it's a great combination on this play of coverage in the end zone and pressure up front. And give John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, plenty of credit. His game plan has been perfect here in the first half for the Yellow Jackets. What a job they have done in big play situations, Tech on defense. John Vaughn on to kick a 22-yard field goal. Auburn trying to get on the board for the first time this year. It is up, and it is good. So they've gotten that over out of the way with 33 seconds to go. in a timely fashion, and, and they've gotten to Jason Campbell some here in the first half. The kick is going to come down at the five-yard line. Scott's got it. 15, 20. Gets shut down from going outside, shy of the... 15, 20. Gets shut down from going outside, shy... Just going to sit on it here. Keep that clock running. Smart 21 move. seconds left. Smart move by Chan Gailey. Three runs, two timeouts. Can't keep time on the clock. How about Reggie Ball, Dave? What a what an opener for him at home. And you know what, Gary? I think he's got a few more plays in him. His coach <laughs> said it's going to be tougher at home than it was on the road. He's got a lot of family and things here. He's got the home crowd. Well, he's done nothing but make it look good. We're at the half. Tech 10, Auburn 3. Lots elsewhere. John and Terry. The Auburn passing game has to make some plays. Jason Campbell's going to have to hit some passes, or it's going to be a long afternoon. And Georgia Tech, they're gaining momentum. And they're playing some good, strong D. The D that they needed in important situations for Tech held up for them. And in that first half, Ball, the true freshman, Magnificent pitch made on that. He also ran the football. Great poise. Daniels got the touchdown. Brown became a one-man wrecking crew towards the end of that first half, but they had to settle for a field goal on the efforts that he made. They got it. They got on the board. We're ready to go here. Philip Yost on the kick. Davis and Scott are back, and that will be taken in the end zone by Tech. And they will start on the 20-yard line here first and 10. David, let's take a look at the stats through that first half, which changed uh, from quarter to quarter. In the first half stats, uh, what jumps out at me is Jason Campbell was 8 for 11, but the passing game just wasn't very productive. And you know, total yards battle being won by Georgia Tech. Uh, time of possession has not been an important issue. Kind of surprising in that regard, because Auburn's plan was to be able to run the ball, possess it, and really take the stuffing out of that Tech defense. First and ten, as we get set to go here in the second half. Ball rolling out, looking up the middle, finds a little room. Right back they go, Jonathan Jackson, up over the 30-yard line. He gets out of there so quickly, out of that pocket when he rolls. He has a lot of time to look because he's there so fast. Uh, it helps a young quarterback with a great play call from Chan Gailey. And Auburn was loaded up to the right side, coming with pressure. And the perfect play call for the perfect defensive alignment. And Reggie Ball came out on the bootleg free. Gailey says it's just too much for any quarterback, much less a freshman, to be worried about having to call plays. That's why I call them all. A.J. Daniels back in there in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side. They'll run the quick draw, looking for a little room, and there is none. There'll be a loss on this one, Daniels. Daniels carried, but he had DeMarco McNeil. The 6'2", 300-pound senior moved in to put the hit on Daniels. You know, big DeMarco McNeil won that battle. And he was in the backfield almost on the snap of the football. Now we've got... 
Maybe a passing situation here. Ball gets the signs. They bring in an extra wide receiver. This is a situation where you have to be careful. The second and long, third and long. You don't want to put too much on Reggie Ball's plate. Keep the offense error free. Second down and 13. They'll run the draw. They had all the receivers in. Only one running back. And Daniels again on the carry. Daniels tackled by Reggie Torvor out of Baton Rouge, senior, right in. And Reggie Ball had to beat out an incumbent starter in A.J. Suggs, a transfer from Tennessee. And Suggs, a very erratic year, the 2002 season, but had a couple big games, including a game here against Virginia, a win against the Cavaliers. But Reggie Ball won this job, Gary, by not only making plays in fall camp, but keeping negative plays to a minimum, and that's how he's played on the game field. Third and seven, three wide outs. Looked like the blitz was on. Ball back in the pocket, looking one-on-one -on -one coverage. Oh, my gosh. Looked like he had a piece of the shirt, and you see Ball turning around going, didn't Rose Green pull my receiver's shirt? Now Rose Green is a safety, as we've said, and he plays a little bit more physically a typical cornerback and and once again rose green gets away without a flag there and and i don't know what the officials are watching out on the <laughs> sideline I mean, you got to drop the flag in that situation xavier mcguire the intended looked like he wanted a souvenir to take home there and he almost got it here's higgins back that punt coming from the 23 yard line trey smith the man back Woo. Avoided getting hit. Flags go down. You must, under the new rules, fair catch or not, give the receiver a chance to catch the football cleanly. And the question, that's a discretionary call with the officials. Kenny Scott, the man who moved in for Tech on the coverage. And that was a dangerous play. And Kenny Scott was throwing a tackle right there. He was not trying to avoid the return man. We got another flag, Dave, back up at the 30-yard line at the other end. So there's more than one call here to be discussed amongst the officials. That's what's nice about being up in the booth. You can let them sort it out down on field level. Well, both going to go one way against Tech. I want to see another punt. They're explaining the options. Everville on the far side with Auburn. Coaches make the decisions, obviously, then tell the captain, who tells the official, what they want here. There were two fouls on the play, both by the Kiki team. That interference with the opportunity to test on the Kiki team, that penalty is declined. That illegal formation on the Kiki team, that penalty is accepted. Five yards and re-kick. There you go. Kenny Scott was bearing down full tilt on Trey Smith. And Trey Smith sidesteps him, or he gets hit head on. That is a dangerous play right there, and the type of play that the rules committee has been trying to avoid with their rule changes. So we will get another punt. Back again goes Hal Higgins. This time he'll be punting as he kicks it at about the 17-yard line. And it'll be handled. No fair catch was called for. 35-40 up to the 45-yard line. And another flag is down. Pretty good work right there by Trey Smith. He caught that in traffic. But flags down again. 45-yard punt, 18 on the return. I think we're going to get the same penalty again. This time it's Dennis Davis. Backup cornerback number 25. And what a play by Trey Smith to keep his concentration, make the catch. And pretty nifty punt return. Watch Davis come in from the right side. And he got blocked. That, that shouldn't be a flag in that situation because he got blocked, number one in the back, and uh, number two, he, he was forced into Trey Smith. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team, 10 yards for the bottom no. of the foul. We had it right in one way. That was an illegal block yeah. in the back. So that was the call. No interference. Right out. Campbell comes to the line. 8 for 12. 70 yards passing for the Auburn quarterback as they begin a first and 10 on their own 24-yard line. 
Williams, the lone setback. Wide receivers left two of them over there. That's where they go. Completed. Did not have his knee down. Pretty good gain of six, seven yards for Courtney Taylor. Taylor's been a favorite uh, receiver look for Campbell. Yeah, Courtney Taylor. Pretty impressive game a week ago against USC and, and had a nice first half. Was not intimidated by the USC defense. In fact, took a pretty violent hit in the defensive backfield when his helmet came off. I thought it should have been a personal foul call, but Jason Campbell starting to settle down at quarterback and make some nice throws. Campbell again, mix in motion, then goes back. They follow mix. That's been the run, and that's what Tech's looking for right there. Right now, Williams trying to turn that corner. Every time you see number nine, Anthony Mix, come in and he goes in motion, stay with him because generally they are running behind him when he stops in the backfield. Well, Dewan Landry, the strong safety. Now, he's a thick guy, converted quarterback, but watch the leather that he throws right here. I mean, he's taking on... Cadillac Williams and driving him back. That's an impressive play by the young strong safety. From Louisiana, big time play. Another big third down, third down and four. Campbell goes back in the shotgun, looking, big rush, screen set up, incomplete. That would have been a first down if Williams had been able to hang on to that. He had nobody in front of him. I mean, and, and this has been the story of the season. The, and, I, and granted, it's early in the season for Auburn, but in the first half, Jason Campbell has a screen set up perfectly for Trey Smith and misses him. And, and that one could have gone for a touchdown. And then on this last play, they have the screen set up. It's going to go for a first down, and Williams flat out drops it. Bliss, the kick, Smith moving up. That ball will bounce back and take an Auburn bounce all the way down to about the 21-yard line, a 49-yard kick. McIntyre comes in to down it. The home of the Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech, and they're up 10-3. Great game plan so far, offensively and defensively for Georgia Tech. They're executing it to a T, and got to give some credit to Chan Gaylor. Reggie Ball goes back to work here. The option play flipped. No gain four or five on that one. Chris Woods, a sophomore tailback. We've seen a lot of tailbacks in there, in and out for Tech. And they've all been successful so far. Ball looks like he can run the option. <laughs> I mean, Ball looks like he can do a lot of things. I mean, he looks very seasoned running the option. Take, there's a lot of decision-making that goes into an option play. You come down the line, you attack the defensive end, the first player that shows, and you got to be able to make the decision whether to cut it up or deal it off, and it has to be an accurate pitch. Great execution by the young freshman. Second down, seven, ball on the 24-yard line. He drops straight and deep, looking deep, down at the 50. That's going to be incomplete. Again, it was Nate Curry there, and Carlos Rogers was on the coverage. Curry's been the man he's tried to hit long today and did early in the game. A ball trying to hit a post here, and he lets this ball go too late. Uh, and the coverage is very solid by Carlos Rogers. Now, you got to get that ball up a counter two earlier. And it looked to me like that was not an over-the-top post route, Gary. That was a skinny post, and that ball has to be delivered right on the cut. Rodgers out of Georgia. 27 players from Georgia are playing here for Auburn. This is a third down and seven. Again, rolling with the blitz on. Dumps it off to the near side. Good play to Woods. And that's up over the 30. Good play just to get rid of it by Reggie Ball. Close to a first down. You talk about a playmaker. Travis Williams, number 51, comes free. And Reggie Ball does not have a lot to work with in the pocket. What a play to get that ball off. I mean, the mobility and, and the poise to get that throw off, and Georgia Tech picks up a first down here. We will remind you, because it, be, it is a first down, it becomes more of a storyline. Ball was one phone call away from going to Auburn. They had recruited him. 
And he said if they'd have made that one last call, I would have gone. Instead, he's playing for Tech against them and leading a charge here in a 10-3 lead. You know, I think Woods would have been down. His knee was down, but the fumble came out. He lost control of the ball there. Gary taking a second look at that replay, and the ball came out before the knee touched the turf, and it resulted in a first down for Georgia Tech. Their first third down conversion of the game, the pitch up to the, about the 38-yard line. P.J. Daniels out of Houston. Uh, Chris Woods, rather, on the carry. Gets hit by Didi. Didi Didi on the hit. David Norrie, I'm Gary Thorne. The Tigers and the Yellow Jackets going at it. Full house here in Atlanta. Over 55,000 in a game in which Auburn was favored. A team that was in the top 10 early on, lost last week. Tech lost last week, but they've come home here and are putting on a show. B.J. Daniels checks back into the backfield. Again, back ball, carries 40. He'll get inside to about the 30, the 42-yard line. Travis Williams moved in to put the hit on. When you try to take pressure off a freshman quarterback, it's so important to get great play up front. I mean, it's paramount. And the offensive line for Georgia Tech is doing it both ways. They're giving Reggie Ball some time to make some plays down the field in the passing game. The big play on the opening play of the game on the post route, the 54-yard completion. And they've also gotten a running game going against this very talented front seven for off. This is another third down, third and one. They send the man in motion back. Go to the deep man and... Uh going to be close. Daniels with the carry. He's got the first down by the looks of it. We'll check in with John Saunders. John. Taco Bell update. As we told you, Marshall was leading when we were at halftime facing Tennessee. Casey Clawson will lead them back again. Plenty of time. Lofts it in the air to Tony Brown as the defender falls down. And Tennessee grabs the lead right now at 14-10. About 20 seconds left in the first half easy day for teams who had uh, numbers before them in the top 25. They did not get it. That's how much they are shy of the first down. So. Ball comes back out. Fourth I, I, down. I, I, do, I don't like this call if they snap the football here. You've got a seven-point lead. Your defense is playing terrifically. Don't give Auburn a play here that changes the momentum. They may just be trying to pull this defense offside. This is a fourth and one. They're two for two and fourth down conversions. Straight ahead, ball with the carry. It all depends on where they spot it. Wow, they may have picked that up. And, and if they pick it up, it's going to be by inches. But I, I just don't think you need to take a risk with, with 8.43 to go in the third quarter and the way your defense has been playing. I mean, they're going to they're gonna call for a measurement here. And I, I don't like it. I think Chan Gailey has been seamless up to this point. But I don't agree going for it on fourth down inside your own 45. Look at this. They did not get it. And Auburn takes over with field position. So let's see how that swings momentum. Tommy Tuberville turned and gave a little bit of a wry smile. I, I know he's thinking that that might be you know, the impetus to turn things around for this Auburn program early in the season. That was... I'll tell you what, if a tie game in that situation, or if you're trailing, maybe. But still, we're, we're not even halfway through the third quarter. So Auburn comes out. Jason Campbell. Two receivers to the left side. Wide receiver near side. Williams in the backfield. Fakes to him. Looking deep. They're going for it all early, and that's going to be incomplete. They overloaded on the near side. Cooper Wallace, the intended. and could not pick it off. Conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Don't drop the, see I dropped the card on that. I'm sorry <laughs> for the delay. <laughs> As our good friend Keith Jackson would say, from Mo oh, 
Dougie. I lost that one. <laughs> but I found it. I had it, but I lost it. Good recovery. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> a uh, second down and 10. Ball on the 42-yard line. Check up at the line here for Auburn. You see Campbell shouting up. It looks like an audible. They're slotted to the right side. Carried straight ahead. Found a hole. And it takes the entire Tech defense to get Carnell Williams. Cadillac Williams. You talk about finishing off a run. I mean, he hits the hole right now. And watch the way he finishes this run. And he lays a lick on Landry, the strong safety. I think Landry, the next time he steps up to take on the Cadillac, he'll be at a, a lower plane. It is third down and one with the ball on the 33-yard line. Third and one. Campbell again, looking like he may have checked it. Puts Mix to the near side in motion. They go for the first down. Second effort's not going to get it. Williams tackle. This tech defense, amazing. Daryl Smith led the charge. And one of the big stories this week, Gary, was Tommy Tuberville. He wanted to know whether Pete Carroll at USC, who, who doubles as a defensive coordinator, was tipped off on Auburn's plays a week ago. And the way that Georgia Tech is moving on the snap of the football and reading these running plays for Auburn, you got to wonder whether Chan Gailey knows something as well. And, it, and most importantly, John Tenuta is defensive coordinator. Remember, this defensive line has outweighed about 49 pounds on average. So they're getting the slants. A big fourth and fourth, a 36. Campbell looking at and sacked by Daryl Smith. And slowly getting up, Jason Campbell. What a game for Daryl Smith. Top of the screen, 51, blitz. And if you're going to pass the football, and you're going to protect the quarterback, you've got to account for all the jerseys. 51 came untouched, and 51 is way too talented to leave unblocked. He's going to finish off that play 10 plays out of 10. His 99 tackles led the team last year in a big one there, and that fourth down is not converted. Tech gets it back. Ball again, looking out into the flats, finds a little room. And that will be carried up close to the first down marker. Jonathan Jackson, who did not start, has come into the backfield a half a dozen times in this game and been successful. Oh, and, and, and they're getting a great deal of production out of their running backs in the past game. And, and what I've been really impressed about with Reggie Ball with those running backs in the flat is he's getting the ball out there on time. I mean, he comes away from the center and the ball's out. It's on the mark, and it's there with great timing. Daniels in the backfield, flags all over the place after a nine-yard gain on the play before. This one gets whistled here. We've got 6.25 to go, third quarter. Tech leading it, 10-3. No scoring in the second half yet. Parts with a snap, false start. Moving in the offensive line, five-yard penalty, remain second down. Well, they'll back that one up. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. You have seen the touchdown picked up by Daniels. Ball has done an incredible job, and they've defensively put the heat on Jason Campbell all afternoon. Every big play needed, it seems as though Tech defense has come through with it, including that sack on fourth down. A second down and seven here. Carried up to midfield and beyond, and a surge a little bit shy of the first down marker. Daniels again on the carry. How good a game uh, is this for P.J. Daniels out of Houston, a walk-on last year who was so good he got a scholarship halfway through the season. Very, very impressive. And, and how good a game is this period? I mean, seldom do you have as much excitement packed into a, uh, a game that's a 10-3 ball game in, in the third quarter. But two consecutive possessions, two fourth down stops respectively by each defense. And this, I, I have a feeling, Gary, this one's going down to the wire. It's a third and one. Ball looking. 
On a comebacker, that's going to be short. Incomplete. Curry coming back, but it's skipped. Now, Junior Rose Green has gotten away with a couple plays on the outside. Hasn't got flagged, but I think he's been terrific in man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, he has been glued on wide receivers. And give Reggie Ball some credit. When Reggie Ball doesn't have the opening, he's been smart with the football. If you're going to miss that throw, miss it low and to the outside. Live to fight another day and punt the football away. So they're going to do just that right here. They will punt. Hal Higgins is back. Trey Smith to receive it. Just got that one away. Smith lets it go, and it's in the end zone. So Auburn will bring it out to the 20, and they will start their first and 10. A good one underway here in Atlanta with Tech leading at 10-3. Centennial Park, which is very close to where we are covering this football game next Saturday. ABC Sports, great triple header, noon Eastern. Defending champion, Ohio State Buckeyes, NC State or Arkansas, Texas. 3.30, Notre Dame takes on Michigan. And at 8, Georgia Tech, Florida State. Or other regional action all coming up next week right here on ABC. This has been uh, one heck of a game. And, uh, David, we were talking during the break here, defensively for Georgia Tech, what is it that they're getting done here that's holding Auburn back? Well, I think John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, is loading up the line of scrimmage with some numbers. They're, they're controlling the Auburn running game, but in passing situations, they're zone blitzing. So they're going with a safer coverage behind their pressure, and they're forcing Jason Campbell to drive the football, hitting the intermediate and short-range throws. And they're saying, what Tenuta is saying is, we're going to bring pressure, and we're going to see if Campbell is disciplined enough and if the Auburn deep uh, offensive passing game is disciplined enough to be patient and to drive the ball in small chunks. Ronnie Brown in the backfield. Campbell's 9 for 15 in passing for a total of 77 yards so far today. They've done a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage, and there's another whistle. The last series, Auburn looked like they were doing a lot of audibles, and it looks like they start this series trying to do the same thing. Well, Jason Campbell's very experienced, and Hugh Nall, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, not afraid to let him operate Prior things from the, the line snap. of scrimmage. All starts. Moving in the offensive line. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That is Edward Ned West, who passed away this past week. He was the sports information director at Georgia Tech for 24 years. And in 1952, this famous photograph arranged by him as Marilyn Monroe put on the Tech sweater and that one on the cover of the football media guide. He was honored, Ned West, honored before today's game. And our great respects to his family. That one carried up to the 18-yard line. Williams, Ronnie Brown have been going back and forth in that backfield today. At times, Brown has run five, six, seven times in a row, and that's Brown carrying again. And when you're having trouble offensively and, and trying to get untracked here early in the season, the last thing you need is it just a, a bunch of penalties to back you up. And, and it, it seems like Jason Campbell and, and Tommy Tuberville's offense has been fighting penalties all game long, starting first and 15, first and 20. Seven penalties, 57 yards, penalized against Auburn in this game. Two wide receivers to the near side. They go short side of the field, and the ball was dropped and incomplete. Couldn't be held on to. Arnamosu was there, but he couldn't hang on to it. Got hit. Aroma Shudo was there, and I thought he had that for a second, but didn't control it. And, he, and, and Butler, the free safety, came in and reacted. And and, and that was uh, that was Aroma Shudo, number one, at the wideout position. But how about Butler? Now, you look at his size. I mean, he is a real lean, classic size free safety at 6'3", 210. And he has a great future in the ACC Cup. Another big play. Tech fans up urging their defense on. It's third and 11 from the 19. Another big rush. And another sack. Four sacks by the Tech defense. Reese moved in. But he had a lot of help. Uh, Reese did arrive first, but you're absolutely right, Gary. This was a sack by committee. And the timing of the pressure has been important. Once again, zone blitz. Campbell doesn't have a lot to choose from with his wideouts, and the pressure arrives early. Kobe Bliss 
Bunting from his own five. Jonathan Smith will take that one at the 50 and get into Auburn territory to start the offense for Tech. They continue to get it done. Kevin Hobbs, the hit. 38-yard punt for in the return. We've got a flag down. Another face mask call, and it's on Auburn. That's a tough penalty because that puts Georgia Tech close to field goal range on first down. Starting off the drive. Auburn today has appeared to be in mud, just trying to get things going when it looks like they might. It doesn't happen. Tech makes a great defensive play, or they commit a penalty. Baseball turn of field for the Braves play. Tune the thrifty car rental postgame report. Scores highlights from across the country on this big day of college football. This one still up for grabs. 3.40 left to go in the third. Tech on top by a score of 10-3. And Georgia Tech has got great field position. 34-yard line. Daniels in the backfield. Daniels with a line of scrimmage and leaning forward. And nowhere to go. Carlos Dansby was there to put the hit on him. Eight tackles last week against USC for Dansby and an All-American watch on him from the start of the season. Came to Auburn as a wide receiver, widely documented, and actually chose Auburn over the vaunted rival Alabama program because Auburn said, hey, we'll play at wide receiver. Took about a, as long as a fall camp for him to move over to linebacker. Couple of tight ends in and the flags go in the formation. That didn't take long. That ball, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, remains second down. So Tech will get penalized five on this one. Is this legal? Will you please circle that? <laughs> what is that? Uh, is that right up here? What is you know, <laughs> Those balloons. And if Dan Burnett has to line up for a field goal to take Georgia Tech ahead by more than a touchdown, that may give him some unfair advantage. Auburn brings everybody to the front. Ball sees it. Tries to go deep against the blitz. Incomplete. Flag down. Interference inside the 10. Carlos Rogers gets called on this one. Jonathan Smith, the intended receiver, getting bumped. This is a fade route. Man to man. Carlos Rogers, cornerback. And the mistake, Rogers doesn't get his eyes back to the football. Contact. I think they would have let that contact go if he gets his eyes back to the football. But you just can't play the man all the way and not react to the football and get away with contact. Dave, this is what Georgia Tech had hoped for. They wanted a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage out of Auburn. They were hoping they'd have the chance to get their receivers out there one-on-one -on -one because they think they can beat them. Well, Chan Gailey thought that Junior Rose Green might be moving inside to safety. That was the news out of Auburn early in the week, and, and Chan Gailey thought that might indicate uh, a tendency for Auburn to play eight men up on the line of scrimmage. And and he was ready for that. He said to us, Gary, he said, hey, if, if we get a lot of eight-man front, and we're going to have Reggie Ball throw the ball down the field, and, and they've been successful. They can do that. First and ten, balls at the 24 for Tech. They're holding on to it. The draw play will be run not very far. Pretty good effort by the defense to hold on the line that time. Reggie Torbor, the man that moved in, put the hit on Daniels. Whoa, and that was close. Daniels gives up the football. That was a fumble, and he was lucky to get back on top of it. Sunday, September 28th, ABC, ex-juvenile delinquent from New York, has one chance to redeem himself by becoming a cop in L.A. 10-8. Officers on duty, Sunday, September 28th, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. Boy, T.J. Daniels, very lucky to get that fumble back. It's a break right there. It brings up a second down and 12 from the 26-yard line. Ball after faking again, looking deep into the corner. End zone, man open. Touchdown! And where 
did Mark Logan come from? A 26-yard touchdown pass to junior Mark Logan. Burnett on for the extra point. And he's got it. And Tech is stunning Auburn 17 to 3. You don't see this kind of throw very often on Sundays. This is a deep post corner out. Logan, third string wide receiver. And what a catch. I mean, he lays out, cradles the football. And you can't bottle that enthusiasm. A true freshman. Logan's first reception of the year. And we go back to the fumble. Watch P.J. Daniels. The ball bounces right back to him. And then Reggie Ball converts to Logan. And it's danger time for Auburn. Three plays, covered 49 yards. The 26-yard touchdown reception. Ball has been able to make big plays in this game. Well, the opening play of the game, 54-yard pass to Curry on a post route. And when Georgia Tech took over for the first possession of the game, the first time they had the ball in plus territory, in Auburn territory, you know, you'd figure with a true freshman quarterback, they play conservatively. They try to take the lead with a field goal, not try to bite off too much. And instead, Chan Gailey takes a shot up top, and Reggie Ball, I and mean, what a play. Seven for 17, 136 yards for Ball in this game. And now the touchdown. Now Auburn's got to get to it. Burnett will be kicking back. Smith is back there along with Williams. And Auburn may be forced to have to put that ball in the air a little sooner. Burnett's kick. It's going to be taken by Williams at the two. The 20. And about the 24-yard line. And Tech is some fired up. Chris Reese moved in to put the hit on. Now can the defense keep doing it? Well, they had a great package. A lot of zone blitz. They kept Jason Campbell out of rhythm. Some terrific blitzing by the middle linebacker, Daryl Smith. And then a sack by committee. And now, last week, Auburn was forced to abandon their run game early. And, and this week, they're in the same situation here in the third quarter. Quarter down 14 points. You're not going to be able to mix in as much run as you'd like to. Auburn starts it here, first and 10 on the 24-yard line. They're going right to the shotgun. Jason Campbell looking. Five receivers. That's over the middle. Up near the 40-yard line, Jarris McIntyre makes the catch for 16 yards. Let's check it again with John Saunders. Maybe not. So Gary Rutgers against Michigan State. Ryan Hartback, quarterback for Rutgers, is picked off by Monquiz Wedlow, who takes it 29 yards for the touchdown. That's Monquiz Wedlow. And Michigan State now up by 17. Notre Dame, meanwhile, has pulled to within three. Have a quick play without a huddle there, but we didn't. That one out into the flats, and look at the coverage as linebackers and cornerbacks move up. Fox again, he's played a tremendous game. Put the hit on McIntyre, the Tampa native. McIntyre had three receptions last year, but couldn't go anywhere last week, brother, but nowhere after he caught that. Well, with the exception of the first down pass to McIntyre and a completion earlier in the game to Silas Daniels, I don't think Auburn has really threatened the field vertically. They have not gotten receivers into the intermediate and deep zones. You know, saw the way Georgia Tech reacted on defense. Jason Campbell needs to start stretching this defense with the passing game. Second down and eight balls at the 42-yard line. Tech on top here, 17 to 3. Campbell back. Campbell's looking sidelines. Dangerous pass. Almost picked off. That one was read immediately by Dennis Davis, a cornerback. And he had that one in his chest. Well, Davis is what you call a hard corner, and he jumps this route. He reads it all the way. He's sitting outside and makes a break and just misses picking this off. 
Getting the extra corner back in on defense for just these kind of plays. That's a great play on the outside by a wide receiver to break up a potential income, a potential interception. Jarris McIntyre turned into a defensive player on that play. Four for 12 third down conversions for Auburn. This is a third and eight. And another automatic being called and the flag goes down. They may not have gotten that time out in time. The 25 second clock expired. Dead ball. Delay game. Wow. The offense, five yard penalty remains. And again for Auburn. Some ugly things happening in this game. Well, Gary, you don't expect this. Uh, you know, Tommy Tuberville's got a returning quarterback, four of his top five starters back on the offensive line. He's got some experience at wide receiver and probably the best group of tailbacks in the country. No excuse for these penalties. Now it's a third down and 13. Wide receivers each side. Two in the backfield. Jason Campbell. Back at his own 15, more flags are down. Near side reception immediately taken out of bounds. Obumanu with a catch, Ben Obumanu, but flags again on the play. This may go against Georgia Tech. This may be offside. Nope. Wow. Auburn again, and that's the 11th penalty, Gary. In Georgia Tech's defensive package, the blitzing, the zone blitzes, especially have got this offensive line flinching quite a bit. The offensive line was a concern last week as they did not play well for Auburn. And it looks like it's going to be a concern again this week. It brings up a fourth and 13 as they decline the penalty. And the Tech fans and players along the sideline just revved up, understandably so. Jonathan Smith standing back at his own 22-yard line. Kobe Bliss, who's had to do a lot of putting in today's game, will try it again. Bliss gets away a kick that'll be handled. And down at the 25-24 yard line. Pretty good coverage right there by Jarris McIntyre, who gets back. A 37-yard punt. 17 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Well, after the loss to USC, a precipitous fall in the rankings. That's my vocab I like word that. of the week, Precipitous. Gary. precipitous. Good. Very a precipitous good. fall in the rankings for Auburn. Six all the way down to 19. You, you rarely see a 13 spot fall. And if Auburn doesn't come back in this football game, it's wave goodbye to the top 25. Tech's got the football again. Reggie Ball dropping straight back this time, launches one, trying to hit a fly pattern, and again, a lot of bumping along the near side, and Rogers thought a flag was going to be thrown and turned around to talk to the official, and there wasn't any. Eight for 19, 144 yards, and a touchdown for the 18-year-old freshman quarterback. There's been some solid play by cornerbacks for both teams, and, and, and both of these defenses have been locking up outside the hand play, by Rodgers. He's their top cover corner and he doesn't give Curry an inch. And, and there is some hand play there, but they'll let you get away with that a little bit more if the ball isn't in the air and you're at the college level. Slot it to the right side this time. Second down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Again, ball back. Quarterback draw. 30. Over that to about the 32-yard line. Shy of a first down. T.J. Jackson. Nose guard moved in on the hit. And that's going to do it here in the third. And the Tech fans are roaring. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. First time these teams have met since 87. Auburn had won, has won the last nine meetings. But Georgia Tech is up 17 to 3. And those that might have come into this football game thinking that Georgia Tech wasn't capable. They played Florida State very tough a year ago. Pulled an upset on the road against North Carolina State. Big victory here against Virginia. They're capable. Third down and four. Caught. Bobbled. And diving for that first down. And I think that third effort may have gotten that done. McGuire, it all depends on where they say his knee went down. It is a first down. Reggie Ball 
I mean, he gets back, gets set, and watch how he delivers this ball to the outside. And that's plenty of velocity on the football and tight coverage. I and mean, that's just a quarterback fitting the ball into a tight spot and moving the chains. And Reggie Ball's playing like a third-year sophomore, fourth-year junior. I mean, he's playing like an experienced quarterback. Their second third down conversion, they're two for ten, so they got a first and ten. Ball carried off the left side. Azamafi, not much room there to go, and we'll go to Times Square Stadium. John. All right, guys, as we continue to update you on these scores, Marshall in Tennessee. Tennessee's starting to take control. Jabari Davis from two yards out opens up their lead down to 21-10. And the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame welcome back Julius Jones, a 19-yard touchdown run. The Irish leading Washington State 23-19. Big comeback there for Notre Dame trailing early in that game. Trailed by 16 points in that football game. Second down and eight, ball at the 38-yard line. Again, straight ahead to the 40 and over the 40-yard line. Good effort on the carry that time. And Zamanfi with a little bit of room. He's just come on to do some work. Thomas moved in to put the hit on. And Janavi and Zamanfi we had not seen in this game prior to the last couple of carries for Tech. Ace, his big breakout game a year ago against North Carolina. And, you know, Zamafi is, is a guy who's a big punishing runner. And, and you let him get going with the head of steam, and he's going to lay some licks on the safeties. He's the lone back, third and five, 41, and a timeout's going to be taken here by Ball. Came out and didn't like what he saw and wanted to talk about what he wanted to run here. Tech leading it 17-3 in the fourth. Tech at the 41. 13 13 left to go in the fourth. Wide outs each side. Lone setback. Bring one back in motion for the pitch. Option. Trying to go back to the quarterback on the throw. Couldn't get it there. Let's go the other way. Up to the 40. The 45 and close to a first down. Jonathan Smith, the wide receiver. He wanted to throw that ball back to ball, but he couldn't. <laughs> I mean. That is as fine an individual effort on a play as you'll ever see. They're trying, they're trying to get a throwback to Reggie Ball, and Reggie Ball is just absolutely draped on the defensive coverage. Watch the effort here by Smith to try to pick up the first down, and he's going to come up just short. Georgia Tech's going to line up to punt the ball away, but what a play by Jonathan Smith. He almost picked up the first down. Great effort by that senior. He had nine receptions last week. So they're going to have to punt it here. Punt will come from about the 25-yard line for Higgins. And how he got that off, I'm not sure. Ball will take a bounce back in favor of Auburn. Another flag down on the play. It's a 27-yard punt. Let's see if it stands. No, it's against punting team. They're going to take the football right there. Illegal formation on the kicking team. A penalty decline. First down. Can Time Auburn out. find a way? They are down seven. surprised by that score strength of UCLA probably the defense this year. first and ten uh, yeah. that ball is caught and looks like it's going to be enough for the first down Campbell is trying to get the quick hurry up offense going yeah it is this is a good move by Auburn look at the look at the stat 108 minutes only three points and uh, smart move here by Tommy Tuberville and his offensive staff even with just under 12 minutes to go in the game. I think it's a good time to go. Oh, no another fumble. Campbell picks it up. Throws it out at the 40 at the line of scrimmage. It'll be caught. Gain of maybe 
couple of yards here as they whistle that one. He dropped the football. Again, a problem on from center. Now, we talked about Lindsey taking over at center. He started at guard a year ago. Nowlin moves on, the former starting center, and they've had problems, Gary, with the exchange all afternoon long. Courtney Taylor received it. That'll be second down and six. They work out of the short gun. Two receivers near side, wide side. Campbell looking straight down the middle. But Taylor and that will be a first down. Courtney Taylor, he's a big receiver. 6'2", 192, looks bigger than that. That's a 16-yard gain and a first down. A deep dig route, and, and that's the way Jason Campbell can throw the ball. And we haven't seen a lot of that early in the season, but he's that talented, and they need to start pumping some air into this defense. They need to get the ball down the field. Taylor again to the right side, this time up the middle, Williams. Williams will take it inside the 35-yard line. The hurry-up offense continuing. Plays coming in from the side. Anthony Mix comes in and brings the play in. Wallace goes out of the game. Down to 10.46 to go. This is, this is a really smart move by Auburn. A lot of teams across the country with over 10 minutes to go, even down two touchdowns, would not be in the no huddle. I think it's a smart move. Campbell back, way back at midfield, throwing the screen. Tech read it. They kept dropping back. It doesn't take long for the defense to recognize what that's all about, and they had it covered. And, and uh, again, Auburn had to get back to that screen play. They had it wide open to Trey Smith in the first half. Campbell missed it. In the second half, Williams dropped a screen play. They had it set up for first down. They had to come back to it and finally chalk one up to the defense. Georgia Tech had it well diagnosed. Auburn, third down conversions, four for 13. This is a third and three. Enormous play, although there's no question they'd go on at a fourth if they had to. Looks over the middle, that's going to be knocked down, picked up, and that's where it will be held. I think Mon got batted up in the air. I think Monrico Crittenden, the big offensive guard, caught the deflection. Now let's take another look. 65 is Crittenden. I don't like Jason Campbell. They're, they're throwing from the pocket too much on these third and short situations. Ball is deflected into the air. That was Eric Henderson, the defensive end. And Crittenden comes down with the catch. <laughs> moves it forward and looked like he wanted to try to pick up the first down. It didn't quite get to the first down marker stuff. Crittenden off the deflection. A timeout taken by Auburn. 9.55 to go in the fourth with Georgia Tech leading at 17-3. plays 40 yards taking 212 but this is a huge play maybe for their season right here it is fourth and one for Auburn fourth and one they'll run it out of the I formation need a first down to keep this going quarterback sneak Jason Campbell did not get a lot of push but the size of Jason Campbell may have been the deciding factor in that first down. And that's the difference between a Jason Campbell on a quarterback sneak and a Reggie Ball. Reggie Ball did not pick up a first down on a fourth down earlier. Just doesn't quite have the size and the height. And Jason Campbell's just going to stretch over the top here. And Georgia Tech got good penetration low. I mean, there were not, there was not a lot of room for Campbell to operate, but with his size, he stretched ahead and picked up the first down. Danny Lindsay, the center, got him some room. Last time they went 0-2 was 84. That's what they're facing right now. Jason Campbell back. Five receivers, three to the near side, wide side. Campbell comes back to the side. Big rush, just throws it away. And he's going to be called for it. Well, he's either going to be called for grounding or some late contact. And that is a grounding call. And Campbell got knocked down and some people on the Georgia Tech sidelines holding their breaths. They didn't want to see a 15-yarder go the other way. End zone shot. Shotgun. Looks to his right, nothing there. Back to his left, nothing there. Now he wants to throw it away, but he didn't out escape outside the tackle box. He had a receiver out in that area, but not enough, not close enough to avoid the call. Well, if you have a receiver outside, you got to get it somewhere near 
the wide receiver. And I know he threw it over the head of the wide receiver, but a referee can can make this, the judgment that you were just trying to throw the ball away and not complete the pass. And that's what the referee did on that call. Second down and 20 ball at the 41-yard line for Auburn. Campbell again back, swings the back out, and that ball's tipped away. Incomplete. Jarris Wilkinson with a tip. Jarris Wilkinson made four plays behind the line of scrimmage at BYU last week. Two sacks, a couple tackles behind the line, and he's a linebacker, a very talented linebacker, a guy who was slated to start this year, but they lost the guys up front, academically ineligible, moved him to defensive end. He's been great. Third down and 20. Campbell back. Gets rushed, gets sacked. Fox again. Five sacks by the Ramblin' Wreck today. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, calls Kieran Fox and Daryl Smith the heart and soul of our team. And 54 and 51 have put together a highlight reel this afternoon. Fourth and 27. Bliss back to punt at his own 40. Jonathan Smith back at his own 10 for Tech. High, fair catch called for. And a con at the 22-yard line, where Tech will take over after a 25-yard punt. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Valvoline Max Life. At 75,000 miles, it's time to switch to Max Life. ADT, America's leader in business and home security. ADT, always there. Nissan and your Nissan dealer. And Miller High Life, to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the highlight. Thirty-five as the clock as well as Tech now operates against Auburn. Yeah, and, and now it puts Auburn in a 9-1-1 mode on defense. You give up a couple first downs and trailing by 14 points, you're really in trouble. You look for them to run the ball wide open at the 30. Oh my gosh, down at the 35. And Zanampi had nothing but grass in front of him. Uh, Zemafi was probably going to take this one to the house, and he trips over his own feet. Now, what a look right here, right behind Zemafi and Ball, and a great move, and he'll trip over his own feet. Oh. And if he doesn't go for six there, he goes an awfully long ways. Yeah, Watch us. Oh, a 13-yard carry. And did he freeze, just absolutely freeze the defensive backfield for Auburn. Playing the run here, obviously. Zemafi again makes the spin, gets over the 35 to the 36-yard line. McNeil, DeMarco McNeil in on the hit. Zemafi just showed up here in the fourth quarter. He didn't see him in the second half at all. Well, he's, he's got the talent, Gary, and, and we mentioned the breakout game against North Carolina, but that was about it for him a year ago, and, and he has not stayed healthy, and you can't make a team if you're not healthy, and, and that's basically been the reason Daniels has been the starter, but Ace making a play here early in the season to get some more carries as the, as the year goes on. Second down and eight, clock ticking, 7.27 left to go. Zemafi again comes back. Finds a little room, trying to get outside, can't. Good tackle at the 39-yard line by Carlos Rogers. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Reggie Ball started this game out with a long pass. Has been able to run the football in the corner for the touchdown to Mark Logan and celebrating it for the freshman I've in been, his second game. I, I've been amazed at how he executes in the backfield with his, with his fakes, his handoffs, the way he gets rid of the ball on time. Third and five at the Tech 39-yard line. This could be a very big first down. He carries and is not going to get there. Auburn's going to get the ball back. Went straight ahead that time. Karibi Didi was in to make the hit. Freshman redshirter moved in. 
Auburn absolutely needed that play to stay in this football game. 6.20 left. That clock continues to run, and Tech will take as much time as they can off the clock here to get this punt off. And Auburn with two timeouts left. And Jason Campbell's going to have to break the huddle for Tommy Tuberville and start throwing the ball down the field beyond the chains and keeping the clock stopped. If he starts hitting backs underneath, taking sacks, time is going to really be a factor. Trey Smith waiting. You saw they ran that right down on the clock to two seconds. Smith takes it to the 30. And he gets some good field position at about the 33-yard line. That's where he is hit. And for Auburn, it is now or never. As far as the offense is concerned, with 5.47 left in this game. On the Against Florida, the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT or BYU and USC. That's tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Check your local listings for the game in your area. David Nori, all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne, and for Auburn, they don't get something done here offensively, they are going to start this season 0-2. Looking, quarterback keeper, maybe a yard gained on that. Campbell, he had nowhere to go, Butler drives him out of bounds. I think Auburn, early in this season, has not done a good job of using Jason Campbell's feet as an offensive weapon. I think that they've made him a little too one-dimensional. He's such a super runner. He was such a threat to run the football last year. And part of that rests on the shoulders of Jason Campbell. When he drops back the pass and he's facing pressure and doesn't see something downfield, boom! Tuck the football and get some positive yards. I think he needs to start attacking with his feet some more. He averaged about three yards a carry last year. Auburn has 56 yards rushing, and that's supposed to be the strength of their game. Campbell going over the middle for the reception at the 42-yard line. Justin Fetzko there to get it. Overhead, our Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes based in Pompano Beach, Florida. At the controls is the pilot, Marty Chandler. 1994 Auburn grad with a degree in aviation management. There he is. Thanks for being with us in the great shots overhead. Probably doesn't look much better to an Auburn grad from up there than it does down here. Here. Well, 5-12, remaining on the clock, third down and two, again, the audible being called by Campbell, Campbell's going to pass on it, or try, again, the big rush, Campbell back at his own 25, and that one thrown over into the Tech bench. Fourth down, Gary, and I, and I think you got to go here. With 4.58 left, I agree with you. And this shakes up as the ball game two games they've played they've not scored a touchdown they started this season ranked in the top 10 in many polls yeah and and they really look like a legitimate team there's only eight to ten teams i felt coming into the season that were legitimate national title contenders and for one of those teams to go zero and two wow it is a fourth down and two balls at the 41 yard line they work out of the shotgun campbell Three wide receivers near side, going deep in the middle of the field. They get the first down, 30-yard line. Fine catch, Cooper Wallace on a Nashville, a sophomore tight end. 29-yard gain. <laughs> oh. I mean, on fourth and one, you want to go on with a higher percentage pass play. This is about as tough a hookup as you'll find. Tight end. And he was draped on three sides by linebackers and safeties. What a throw and an even better catch. Used his big 6-4 frame to get that one. One setback, Campbell again working out of that shotgun, looking into the middle of the field inside the 10-yard line. Another fine catch with tough coverage on Courtney Taylor, his favorite target today. Hang on, sports fans. Well, this is the Jason Campbell that we saw a year ago. Two terrific throws on consecutive plays. Skinny post, Courtney Taylor, nice route, and plenty of time for Auburn. 50 yards on the last two passes. A first down and goal from the nine. Campbell again, the handoff and the spin, and they're going to lose yardage on this one. No room. Wilkerson came in and put the hit on. Aether Brown, strong side outside linebacker, made a heck of a play as well. And I think Brown may have beaten Wilkinson to the ball, play, ball carry. Smith just got spun around. He's the lone man back. 
Campbell looking into the middle. Rushes on. Campbell cannot get away. Drop the football. It's down right there at the 25-yard line. Eric Henderson again with the pressure. A loss of 13. And that is a major mistake by Jason Campbell. You cannot take a sack in that situation, let alone a loss. I mean, that he's, he's back behind the 25-yard line, retreating all the way back. And now he really puts his team in a hole. You've got to break towards the line of scrimmage or get rid of that football. Six sacks today by Tech. 3.05 left to go. This is another big play. Third and 25. Four receivers out. He's probably going to run with the ball. Trying to get back beyond the line of scrimmage into the end zone. Incomplete. And he got hit as he threw it. Jonathan Cox got back for Tech on defense. Jason Campbell has played a lot of football at the quarterback position. A lot of experience. I don't think Auburn will be able to recover from the mistake taking as big a sack as he did there. He knows better than that. And this is just desperation here into the end zone. Lucky to not get that ball picked off by the cornerback Cox. And Wilkinson once again making plays behind the line of scrimmage. Auburn had a first and goal at the nine. They now have a fourth and goal at the 25. Fourth and goal, 25, 254 left to go. Wide side, two receivers, and they got to take a timeout. They did not have the play they wanted called. And that's another pretty glaring error right there, losing timeouts when you're down 14. Texties come up big. Here is a fourth and goal from the 25-yard line. Two receivers right, one left. Keep one back in the backfield as a safety. Jason Campbell, Nickel D obviously in. He got a free shot here. Campbell had it knocked out of his hands. Picks it back up. He's down. Tex got the football, but a flag's down on the play. That's that's a shame that Jason Campbell didn't take a crack down the football field. That's that's an offsides flag against Georgia Tech, and Auburn's going to get another shot. Eric Henderson was the man putting the heat on. Yeah, you look down the near side end right here. And Jason Campbell, if he recognizes that, you got to get the football. And <laughs> Perhaps the offside helping get the ball. Yeah. He knocked it out of his hands. <laughs> so Auburn gets another chance with 2.47 left on the clock. And what's important here, right, and, and it's you know just as important when you, you see the offsides occur as a quarterback, but even if you don't get an offside, you've got to... Put the ball into the end zone. Make sure you give a wide receiver a chance to make a play on the football. Fourth and goal at the 20 for Auburn. Tech leading at 17 to 3. Two wide outs to the right side, one left. Out of the shotgun, Campbell. Looking down the middle, sacked. Ball picked up off the fumble to the 30. No, he was down. He was down on the sack. Smith, Henderson the hit. Auburn offensive line has been porous in the second half. And Jason Campbell, you know, has been struggling, shaky start in both ball games this year. But I'll tell you what, Gary, he has not gotten a lot of help from the big boys up front. No. It's two games in a row where the offensive line has been a very big question mark. Auburn had that first and goal at the nine. They ended up losing 11 yards after that. There's 2.22 left on the clock. Flags were down. Another call against Tech. I'm sportsmanlike. Conduct call against Georgia Tech, and this was after the whistle. Sportsmanlike conduct against Georgia Tech. Half the distance, it'll be first and ten. Doesn't affect possession after the end of the play. Georgia Tech has the ball first down. So, all they've got to do is run out 222. Tech's got the football back. They've got the 17 to 3 lead. And a chance to knock off Auburn in this game. Ball. They'll just hand it off, try and grind out a first down. Obviously, Auburn knows that. Enzema, Enzema figures on the carry. 
But he's going to be facing virtually an 11-man line here. Next week. Next Saturday. It's Florida State. Georgia Tech will be there to take on the number 10th ranked team at the moment. Florida State 1-0. They shut out North Carolina, face Maryland tonight in Tallahassee. They may uh, want to look at a lot of tape here on this game. All of a sudden, that game gets a lot more interesting, and I think Georgia Tech's going to have to play even better to come out with a win down in Tallahassee. That team is loaded. Ball on the handoff. Not much of a gain there. We're going to get a timeout taken with a minute 33 left to go. Ball just, and Tech just trying to run this thing now. of a win for Bill Doba taking over for Mike Price up in Pullman. Big game coming up tonight here on ABC. Florida State, Miami, number 18 against number 3 in that great rivalry. Or you'll see BYU and number 5 USC. That's coming up tonight. Here, Tech fans standing, applauding. A lot of the Auburn fans have already left and there were lots of them here. A minute 33 left to go. It's a third down and 13. And they'll be content to just carry that straight ahead. And they can't get a timeout. So they'll run the clock down as far as they can, then punt the football. Chan Gailey's game plan. We talked about his defensive coordinator, John Tenuta. How about Chan Gailey? And just another stroke of brilliance there to make sure he doesn't risk a fumble on a handoff. Keep the ball in the hands of your quarterback. And the game plan, the play by Reggie Ball, the play by the offensive line up front. And, and Chan Gailey's play calling have really helped this team to a big upset. Ball has been spectacular. Running the offense here under a minute left to go. And uh, they're going to take the timeout now as they got that clock down right to the last second. They will use the timeout and they were just running it down. Tech was. Reese coming over and they can smile when you're up 17 to 3. With just three races to go, the IRL IndyCar. <laughs> you got a slick, sexy woman out there on a big IRL racetrack. <laughs> the IRL championship battle. You're going to see the Delphi Indy 300 from Chicagoland Speedway tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. It'll be right here on ABC Sports as the IRL championship battle continues, and it is up for grabs. Gary, you are versatile. you got to just kind of weave the story together, <laughs> you know what I mean? Even if it doesn't fit. Auburn still has not scored a touchdown this season. This is their second game. And right now, in deep trouble of any chance to get it. They'll try and block this thing, obviously, if they can. The kick is going to be very short. And it will take a tech bounce going out of bounds at about the 33-yard line, where Auburn will take over after a 24-yard kick under pressure by Higgins. Yeah, Higgins not real excited about his production on that punt, but the important thing, get the ball out of there. And, and don't create, create a disaster and an opportunity for an onside kick. 38 seconds remaining. Tech ready to celebrate. Today, Chevrolet players of the game, Courtney Taylor from Auburn, some fine receptions, and Reggie Ball from Georgia Tech. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. First and ten. True freshman held up pretty well in this game, didn't he, Garrett? Absolutely. Looking, of course, straight downfield, up over the 30, 25, and stepped out of bounds there was Trey Smith, Venice, Florida native, sophomore, coming out of the backfield that time. Did go out of bounds, so it will stop the clock. I don't think you ever give up in a football game. And, and right on this play, Auburn should be throwing into the end zone. If you can get a touchdown pass, on this next play, maybe on on third down, then you have an opportunity for an onside kick and a Hail Mary. 
never give up. Campbell's got a second and four. Two wide receivers off to the right side. Three down linemen. The linebackers moving into the holes will back up here. Campbell looking to the end zone. Gets grabbed from behind as he tries to throw it. That's going to be intercepted. Tex got it, far side, 30, 35, 40, down the sideline. Still on his feet inside the 40, Dennis Davis. Georgia Tech is going to upset Auburn. That's going to start the season 0-2. They get a couple celebration flags here. But Jason Campbell was hounded all afternoon. And he got his arm hit on delivery there, Gary. That was the reason for the interception. Quite a return. Wow. It has been a real disappointing game. The second in a row for Auburn. That's more than my contact. This shows the tech. It was after the play. The interception stand. First down. That's a 15-yard penalty. Executive producer ABC Sports is Mike Pearl. Our senior producer, Bob Toms. Our coordinating producer, Bob Goodrich. Jim Russell is our producer. Margaret Galen is our director. Steve Feinberg, our technical director. Our associate director, Bob Herbstman. On behalf of all of our crew, we thank you for joining us here. And they'll be talking about this one for a while. Because Georgia Tech has just upset Auburn as they run off the final seven seconds, 17-3. to It's what makes college football great. I mean, that's why they play these games, and Reggie Ball, a true freshman, pulls off the upset. Auburn had won the last nine meetings. They hadn't played since 87. The goalposts are going down. The Tech fans are on the field. And a victory for Tech over Auburn, 17-3. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for being here. Let's get updated with John.